Welcome back to America Right Now. Well, folks, after nearly three months of intense negotiations and a change of House speakers, it appears congressional leadership have agreed in principle to a framework for a nearly $1.6 trillion spending bill that would fund the U.S. federal government. But is it a deal that the slim Republican majority will embrace without more chaos. Let's ask Arizona Republican Congressman and member of the House Appropriations Committee, Juan Siscomani. Congressman, thank you so much for taking the time for us here. Uh, this is a, a deal that uh, the speaker has described as, quote, the most favorable budget agreement in years. Uh, Congressman, tell me, do you agree with the speaker's characterization on this prospective deal? And can you tell us what's in the bill, particularly when it comes to things like border security and spending cuts? Sure. Well, thanks, Tom, for having me on. And, and this this is a product of uh, months in the making of work and negotiations, but also, quite honestly, months in the also in the lost time bucket as well, because... The, the House has really lost a lot of time and wasted a lot of time with, with fights that led to nowhere. And that's what we had to do a couple of CRs uh, already. One of them, I may remind everyone that on September 29th, the CR that was proposed then had a uh, good portion of border security in it of H.R. 2 that we passed in the House. Right. That was negotiated by also the Freedom Caucus members, members like Chip Roy and others were championing this this uh, possible CR, which was voted down due to 20-some Republicans voting against that at that time, yeah. which led to where we are today. So what the Speaker has been able to negotiate, Speaker Johnson, that is, because at that time, Speaker McCarthy had negotiated a similar, similar uh, uh, package, now we are in a position where uh, the speaker has done as much as he can. And let me tell you, that's usually a phrase used as, you know, falling short. But I got to tell you, given the current political dynamics here on in the, in the House in Washington, but also the political reality of not having the Senate mm -hmm. and the White House and, and the House Republicans, in this case, being the sole member wanting these uh, further cuts and strong on border security, the speaker has been able to negotiate so, the best deal possible that could actually make it through and prioritize yeah. border security on that. Can you can you tell the American people from a border security standpoint, you know how uh, how concerned they are about that issue. Uh, what did the speaker manage to negotiate with uh, with the Democrats uh, to put into this bill? Well, first, I would say, going back to your previous point, the speaker was even able to uh, have a $16 billion reduction in the spending that, that we had talked about before. The speaker played uh, in this in this uh, room where outnumbered, nevertheless, stood his ground, and we got our priorities through. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to the border, and I was just there at Eagle Pass, I represented yeah. a border district, but I wanted to go to Texas as well just to see the broad section of the border and how it gets impacted. It's not so much, and, and this is in the words of Border Patrol as well, it's not so much the funding piece that they're looking for, it's the policy changes that they're looking for. Without those policy changes, none yeah. of this uh, funding would work. You were down at the border last uh, last week. There were 60 House Republicans. You went to e Eagle Pass. And there was a very powerful moment there when you talked about your own personal story. Watch this. I'm an immigrant. I came to this country when I was 11 years old became a U.S. citizen in 2006 as an adult in my 20s. Then I was elected to the United States Congress 16 years later. No country in the world would give you that opportunity. So I believe in the opportunities this country has. I believe in the generosity of our nation. I believe in the American dream that I'm living. But this is not it. Sir, in December, over 300,000 illegals were encountered at the border. It's the most in U.S. history. Uh, this week, uh, the House Republicans began the impeachment process into Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, you know, it, with such a slim majority and it taking so long to get to this point. Do you believe that the Republicans have the votes to impeach the secretary, which many people believe he should be impeached, should the vote come to the floor? 
I strongly believe that Alejandro Mayorkas needs to be impeached, and that needs to happen immediately. Tom, what I saw on the, at the border in the Eagle Pass is very reflective of what I've seen in Arizona. There's desperation from the people on the ground, and I mean the agents, of course, but also the business owners, the, the, the ranchers, the community leaders, the elected officials. Everyone in the community wants something to be done here. Mm -hmm. And the secretary continues to yeah. ignore this issue. No longer can you assume that there's a there's a, another strategy that may work. Uh, all the evidence shows that he has been he's been neglecting his job and doing nothing to actually address the, the crisis that we have. Congressman, we are less than 48 hours away from the Iowa caucus. President Trump is currently leading in the latest poll at 52 percent. Border security, of course, have been a major issue in the election and out of your own district. Uh, of the border security proposals that you have heard from the candidates, is there any anybody that has stood out or is there any component that you have heard that has stood out? Well, I'll tell you what, I think all candidates are on the same page on the importance of the issue. I think we've seen that in the debates. We've seen that in their communication. They all understand the nature of this. Uh, obviously, I'll state, I'll state the obvious here. There's only one person uh, in that list that has actually done it. And that's been President Trump. His policies have worked on this issue. And so he can speak from experience in that. Many of the policies that I'm promoting, that I'm uh, speaking of in a way that would work, just mentioned one earlier right now, the migrant mm -hmm. protection protocol right. is something that was implemented before and it actually worked. Now that's something that I think the rest of the candidates also believe in. So I see a, a, a unity within our candidates on this issue. This is one of the issues that in today's divided GOP side can actually unify uh, Republicans and even Certainly. many Democrats that can see the issue uh, with, of how important it is. So I am happy mm -hmm. to see all Republican candidates on that ballot believing in strong border security and advocating for the right policies. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Arizona Congressman Juan Siscomani. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you. See you soon.